Hello, hello, everybody. My name is Harlequin Murray, and I am your co-host this evening. Um, I am one of the senior team leaders on our team, along with Miss Ellen Wynn, and we've got some others, but I get, I get to be the co-host, so I get to have all the fun. But um, anyways, I also get to go and introduce our team leader, um, Miss Ellen Wynn. And first of all, for everybody who is new here, and this is your first team Zoom, welcome. We're glad you're here. We are super excited with everything happening with DAC, and we hope you are too. But um, for those of you who are new and don't know <coughs> Ellen, um, a little bit about her background. She grew up on a farm in Dallas, Georgia, not Texas. It's just outside of Atlanta. And she lived there. Well, she's actually back on the property now um, on the original homestead, living in a house that she's built. But um, anyway, she once she got out of school, she went and worked in the restaurant industry for many years, worked her way up in different management roles and was actually working with Domino's Pizza in um, senior you know, in regional management and training. And she ended up about, I think it's about 20, 25 years ago. And I apologize, Ellen, if I got that date wrong, but um, she started her own restaurant and she had a couple of locations. It was a pizza restaurant. It was not a domino. So she struck out on her own, but she has been a business owner ever since. And um, she still owns a business as well. So then about 20 years ago, she got into network marketing and has been doing a lot of things with that. She worked whenever I met her, she was actually originally my upline in another company. And she, at the time she was the national training director for that entire company. So she's got a lot of training experience a lot of business background and a lot of network marketing background. But um, anyways, I've known Ellen for almost 18 years now, I think it is. But anyway, she is currently a area director in the DAC comp plan, as well as a one-star executive on the longevity comp plan. But um Without further ado, let me have Miss Ellen Wynn take it away. Excellent. Thank you, Harlequin. I always appreciate that warm introduction and that walk down memory lane. Man, I love this industry and I love DAC. It brings people back together. Harlequin and I have not worked together in a few years. And when the opportunity came around with DAC, she was one of the first people that I thought of, and I actually talked to her early on after getting started with DAC, and timing wasn't right at the time for her, so she declined the offer to get involved at that time, but then a year later, we reconnected, and timing was right, so thank you, Harlequin. I'm, I'm so blessed to have you on my team as a team leader here, and those of you that are part of Harlequin's organization, you're very blessed to have her as a leader. She is knowledgeable, committed, uh, great work ethic, and is full of integrity. So you've got great support with her if you're part of her organization. I see some other great leaders on the, on the line tonight that, is, that have started joining us, and we're glad to have you as well. But as Harlequin said, if you're new, welcome to DAC. You're in a great place, and the timing could not be better. I'm so excited about what's going on. I'm a little hoarse right now because I've been talking nonstop every single day about the ERC program. And we're going to continue doing that tonight. I'm going to go through some of the things that I normally cover on Monday nights. Um, but then we're going to have some conversation about marketing and who you should be talking to and getting you to think about the connections that you have that could turn into some really big money for yourself and your family. OK, I've had some great conversations with agents throughout the week and um, We've got some huge stuff in the pipeline, and I want that huge stuff in your pipeline. So if you don't already have a pen and paper, go ahead and grab one now so you can take some notes. I'm going to get us kicked off in screen share mode like I always do and get us started 
with team recognition first off. So we have BAC to the rescue. And man, is it not ever more true than it is right now uh, because we're coming to our business community with a rescue plan for them. Those that got hit hard with COVID now have the option of getting the ERC on top of PPP if they got that money. And you as a DAC agent could really be the one that helps save that business by making them aware of this free money from the government. But I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a minute, but just had to say that with the DAC to the rescue with our Wonder, Wonder Woman or Superman uh, uniforms on underneath our regular daily attire, right? All right, so let's talk about our team recruiting. This is the leaderboard for the week of 1017 through 1024. In first place, Ellen Wynn, I had six new agent recruits for the week. Guys, you need to be on the leaderboard with me because now is a time to be building a massive army that you can override. You can earn uh, enroller bonuses and also on what your team is doing. So that's why I'm actively recruiting and encouraging you to do the same. So I came in in first place with six new agent recruits. In second place, we had Miriam Dash McMillan with five new agent recruits. Congratu congratulations, Miriam. In third place, we had Nick Cranstown with four new agent recruits. Congratulations, congratulations, Nick. In fourth place, we had a three-way tie with Annette Blanchard, Dennis Robinson, and JC with Samaj Financial Services, each with two new agent recruits. All in all, we had 41 people who recruited at least one person last week for a total of 56 new agents. So um, a few more new agents onboarded last week versus the previous week. So great job headed in the right direction there. Um, I'm only listing if you had at least two new recruits hitting the leaderboard there. But congratulations to everyone that had an agent join the team. That means that you could earn 25 to 50% more income just because you brought someone in and you can match their revenue if they get funding. So um, um, I did this last month and I, I quickly went back through. I didn't do the totals of the dollar amounts on the funded value like I did last month, but I thought it was noteworthy to tell you how many giggle fundings we had in the team and team win my organization. We had 60 agents in our team that had a giggle funding in September. Why am I telling you about sep September fundings in the middle of October? Well, that's because giggle fundings that um, that gig worker three thousand to five thousand dollar funding for business owners that are still operating out of a personal checking account um, or the over five thousand but still have a personal checking account. Giggle is the only lender that will fund them. So we had 60 agents that had a giggle funding in September. And because those are always smaller fundings, they only get paid out once a month. So we got paid out on the 18th of October for all the fundings that took place during the month of September for giggle. Now, if you're new, all of our other fundings get paid out the day after DAC gets paid because the other fundings are larger funding amount. But uh, it just wasn't worth it for Giggle to try to pay us a commission every time we had a 300 or 500 or whatever dollar, not, not 300, but $400 or a thousand dollar commission. So that's why we're doing the, the monthly statement there. Um, auto, all total, we had 65 Giggle fundings with 60 agents getting at least one funding. So uh, we had four people that had two or more Giggle fundings. We had Eric Johnson in first place with three fundings last last month if you remember Eric had over 7,000 cumulative total in giggle funding so it actually counted as a new client and it got him amped up uh, according to the compensation plan but no one had that 6,000 or more funded total value that is required for giggle funding so no one got amped up with giggle or no one had a new client that counted towards promotions with the giggle fundings but congratulations for those of you that had two or more um, for those of you that are new and listening, if you haven't seen my website training video, you definitely want to do that. It's on my Vimeo channel. You can find that by going to Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O dot Ellen Wynn, my name, E-L-L-E-N-W-I-N-N 
link and it'll take you straight over to my Vimeo channel. There you're going to see new agent. I forget, it's a showcase. And I think it's a new agent resources or new agent training. Um, open that and it's the third or fourth video down that series. It's VAC website training. You want to watch that. And I explain why Giggle is not the number one thing you want to lead, lead with because of the way it counts, the way it pays and the turnoffs and turn ons there. So um, not to discount those of you that did get a Giggle funding. Um, you know, it's great to see that commission come in, but it takes a lot of them to add up over time. OK, all right. I want to go through the recruiting in incentive to remind everyone that if you've been with DAC a while, maybe you're not engaged and eligible for team overrides, but we have an incentive that's running through the end of the year. And that is on any personally enrolled agent that you have signed up in the business from May 23rd all the way through the end of 2022, you're considered automatically engaged on their first two fundings no matter when those fundings come along. So if I were you considering that we have this new ERC program and you're automatically engaged on their first two fundings, no matter when it takes place, it could happen uh, six months from now, 12 months from now, or two years from now on those first two fundings, you're gonna get paid a matching enroller bonus of at least 25%, even if you haven't had a personal funding. So. With that said, talking about the ERC, guys, there are going to be some huge commissions coming through because of ERC platform. And I would hate for any of you to miss out on an override because you aren't actively promoting DAC and getting yourself qualified for those overrides. I talked to someone on the team today who has a business that has at least 400 employees and they're putting them through the process with DAC. If you do the math on that, that's over a quarter of a million dollar commission that could be going to the agent that refers that organization. And on an enroller bonus, you earn 25% minimal match up to 50% match. So if you were at 25% on uh, 250,000, 50 is 125, so half of that would be $65,000 on an enroller bonus if that was someone that you enrolled. $65,000 enroller bonus. Now, if that doesn't put a fire under you to understand that you need to get yourself engaged or at least be, new, be recruiting some new people so you're engaged on their first two fundings, doesn't count on old people that you've had in the business. It counts on new people uh, from May 23rd forward. So if they, their enrollment date is during that time frame, you're eligible for those bonuses. But I'm telling you, it's going to be some sick money out here with some of these big businesses that we're going to be helping along the way. So make sure you're taking advantage of that and recruit, 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 right? Um, I did want to touch real quick on the engaged portion of the comp plan, which is what the auto engaged on the enroller bonus is. There are five different ways for you to be engaged and you have to be engaged to be eligible to earn on a team. You always are qualified to earn on your personal clients, but for you to earn your enroller bonus, your matching enroller bonuses, and to be eligible to earn on any overrides on your team through the funding bonuses, and also those extra bonuses that you earn when you're moving through the comp plan. We've had some promotions uh, this past week, and I'm going to go through those in a minute. So to be able, eligible to earn those extra bonuses at your higher ranks, you have to be engaged. If you're not engaged, then you don't qualify to earn any of that extra money. So how do you get engaged? Well, your first 60 days in the business, you're automatically engaged and uh, are eligible to earn on anybody in your team, depending on what your rank is and, and what the pay plan says, right? Uh, second way is to have any new client funded value. So all of those giggle clients that came in, even though they didn't count as a client for promotion or they didn't count to get amped up, they did count to get you engaged. Number three, a renewal funded value. If it's giggle, it's gotta be 6,000 total for the month. Um, or a funded value or a $6,000 line of credit client or a renewal funded value, okay? Um, so 
Those are going to count towards getting you engaged. And then we have qualified at AD or above. You're automatically engaged. Another reason to move towards the leadership ranks. And then six active customer finance clients. So one of five ways there you can get engaged and be eligible to earn on your team. Also, I want to go to this real quick before we go to the recognition. Um, Harlequin, are you seeing the comp plan slide that I just switched over to? I am, and okay. um, you left one off on there. If you have had a funded client in the last 12 months or um, in roller no. bonuses. Nope, nope, that's not on auto engage. That's only on personally oh, enrolled. Oh, auto, okay. Yep, and that, that's only on personal roll. And I just, I pulled this off of the comp plan doc. David's updating that, so we'll see how he words that on um, that engaged for personally enrolled agents. So what Harlequin is referring to is personally enrolled agents only not engaged on your team. But um, if you have had a funding in the past 12 months, now you're engaged and eligible to, in, to earn on personally enrolled agents. So um, yes, thank you for saying that Harlequin. All right, let's go back over to this chart. So. Um, if you notice, this is like page four, let's see, page three of the compensation document. And I pulled this directly from the top of the Agent Resource Center under the big green three. You have your compensation video and your compensation chart or PDF. This is the PDF in page three here. Um, these leadership override matching bonuses. Notice it says you must be engaged right here in the top left rank or top left corner. If you're not engaged, these extra bonuses will pass you by. They will not get paid out to you. Um, so when you get to DAC 1, you earn an extra 10% matching bonus, even on your own personal commissions. DAC 2, 15% matching bonus. DAC 4, 30% matching bonus, and so on. And we have uh, some new DAC ones and a new DAC four tonight. So let's get over to them and let's talk about who they are and what they did to get that promotion. So to get to DAC one, you had to have at least one qualified funding and a total funded value of at least 10,000 or more. And we're excited to recognize LaVonda Goodman, uh, I've got LaVonda's most recent funding listed for $1,154. She was just under $10,000 in total funded value and had a giggle client that put her over the $10,000 minimum. So that promoted her to DAC1. She's had several fundings to get there. So LaVonda's worked extra hard to get to DAC1. Some people, it comes much easier, like Leora Israel had uh, their first funding at $55,000. So just one funding got Leora promoted up to DAC1. And Ivan Mejia had a single funding for $10,500 that also promoted to DAC1. So congratulations to all three of our DAC1s. Harlequin, do we have any of these folks on the line with us tonight to share their testimonial on funding? Yes, we have Leora on the line. All right, I'm going to take us off of, I'm going to take us off a of screen share here for a minute so we can see who we're talking to. Awesome. Okay, Leora, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello. There you are. <laughs> Hi, it's dark right now where I am, so. <laughs> oh no, okay. Well, first off, congratulations. And um, if you can kind of share with everybody just so they know who, who your client was, what industry they're in, um, how you met them and how it came about that you got funding for them so that we can let everybody else know and give them some suggestions and ideas. Yeah, so my clients are in a transportation and warehousing um, industry, basically trucking. Um, they are a moving company and I do their accounting. Um, I'm a tax accountant and um, I knew that they had, you know, consistent revenues and things like that. We've been working on building business credit 
um, pretty much like the slow way. But when I saw the requirements for the funding through DAC, I thought it would be, you know, a good opportunity for them to get some funding that they needed. And that's what we were able to do. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so they were able to get 55,000, which is a phenomenal number. Now all you need to do to get to DAC 4, since you've already got the 40, you've got more than the 40,000, you just need to get three clients that have at least 6,000 6, in funded value to get up there. So that'll make it a lot easier to get there. Yep, so, I'm working on some more of my clients. Pardon? Thank you. I said, yep, I'm working on some more of my clients. Okay. <laughs> And there, you're also positioned phenomenally for ERC to offer that to your clients. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congratulations, Leora. I was going to ask you, um, as a CPA, how do you feel about us offering the ERC? Um, I think it's excellent because although I do my own um, clients ERC, I felt like I don't want to take on anyone else's. Like I have enough, right? <laughs> it's not um, an easy thing to do. It's a lot of work. So, but when I heard that you guys are offering the program, of course the light bulb went out. I mean, I know so many other accountants, some of them are in our groups and things like that that are asking questions about ERC. They don't really know how to do it, but they want to do it. Some of them haven't done it right or have had issues. So I'm like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity to kind of recruit them and um, they can kind of like basically make money off of the client for getting the credit, but not actually have to do the work directly themselves. So yeah, yeah I'm, awesome. kind of, I'm kind of positioning myself to do some marketing for that or like um, work on my pitch as far as like how I'm going to approach, you know, other accountants that I'm associated with or just in these groups with so yeah I love it well listen up guys and and think about this from whatever profession it is okay Leora is talking about bringing in some other accountants and tax preparers and so on Leora you only get paid for your tax and accounting business on your personal customers right now right for those services absolutely yep okay so mm -hmm. what Leora is thinking is bringing in other, other accountants that all have their own book of business. So understand, she's putting herself in a position to start getting paid on all of the other CPA's clients that she knows. Not taking away their clients for bookkeeping or anything, but she's going to tap into those other professionals in her same profession that already have a book of business and they're all going to share it with their clients because they'll get paid on that. But because Leora is going to be the referrer, she can earn a 50% matching commission off of what her enrolled CPAs do. So that can be a massive explosion for your business, Leora. And I just wanted to share that with everybody on here. So now you can earn a piece of everybody, every accountant out there that you knows book of business just by referring them out to the ERC program. And um, for those of you, this is a good point to say, you know, our, we charge a 20% a contingency fee on the back. They've said it multiple times and David said it again. Generally speaking, um, the ERC pros, which are the professionals that are, that are doing all of the ERCs for us, generally they're seeing that they're finding about 20% more in credit dollars than the average CPA or average bookkeeper is doing for their clients on their own. Just because they have all of these accountants and attorneys that are working and trying to uncover every bit of legislation that will allow them to legally and ethically write that down as a deduction. So um, it really pays for itself and it gives you the time now you can put your ERC clients through there and instead of worried about doing your individual clients, Leora, you can worry about blowing up your business by spending that extra time now going out and recruiting other <laughs> accountants. So and way you to know go what? to see oh, a sorry. massive explosion in your business. I thought about that because me and Harley Quinn um, had a conversation, I think it was about that. And I was like, if... 
I, first of all, the way that I charge my clients is not even a percentage, which I never even thought of. That was like, that's genius in itself, right? I'm charging them a flat fee, but you know, if they're getting like the way that I looked at it, when I looked at my numbers, after I had that conversation with Carly Quinn, number one, I'm going to be freeing up my time on working on these credits. And then number two, I'm actually, I will probably end up getting paid more (laughs) from just getting the commission versus me actually like charging the flat fee that I've been charging. Like I ran some numbers and we, and her and I, we even went over a couple examples and I was like, hmm. So yeah. And the fact that you know, even though it's like I'm outsourcing the work for my clients, but at the on the back end, it's being worked on by other professionals who definitely have the knowledge and the resources and the team structure. Because in my firm, it's me and one um one OPA and another CPA that work on these credits. So it's just the three of us. Whereas the ERC program, there's you know more people. So. Yeah, um, I've definitely been considering that. <laughs> awesome. Well, glad to have you on board and glad to see you having success out of the gate early and look forward to see what you can do with the ERC program. It's going to be great. All right. Harlequin, do we have anybody else? Um, no other DAC ones that are on the line. At least okay, not gotcha. I see. if you're on here and you're listed as like iPhone or something like that, Please just go ahead and unmute yourself, but I don't believe so. We don't have LaVonda or Ivan on. Uh, Yeah, I wasn't able to get in touch with them. Okay, got it. Yeah, and um, I I was looking forward to hearing from LaVonda because she's been on the leaderboard every week recruiting and just working it hard and had several fundings in here. Maybe she'll pop in a little bit later. Okay, I'm going to go back to screen share and go back through our slideshow. All right, next up, we have a new promotion to DAC4. This is a really big promotion, okay? This is the top level that you can reach in the DAC funding commission levels without building a team. So getting to DAC4, you're at at the pinnacle of success, either solo or even though you're building a team, it's really the foundational point that you have to be at to be able to move to DAC AD. RD, ND, and RVP. So um, a DAC4 has to have at least four qualified fundings and a total funded value of at least 40,000 or more. So this week, we're really excited to acknowledge Dion Davis for promotion to DAC4. Dion has had over $256,000 of fundings go out to business owners in the local community. And all of his fundings have been a, a little bit on the larger side. So he is really knocking out some big cash for himself and really bringing home a lot of extra money for those business owners that have gotten funded through him. So congratulations, Dion. We're really appreciative of everything that you're doing and um, would love to hear from you. But I understand that Dion had a meeting to go to tonight and could not come on and do a testimonial. But Harlequin, if he happens to pop on here, please make sure you let me know. and We'll give him an opportunity to speak, okay? Yeah, yeah, he actually is meeting with a client currently and awesome. said that he will be on next week. But one, o- one other comment that I would like to make, um, Dion is sponsored by JC and that is her second DAC4 that she has personally recruited. Sweet. So, Congratulations, congratulations on that, JC. Yeah, congratulations, JC. Way to go. All right, onward with the slideshow. Um, we're about to wrap up slides and then we're going to talk about marketing here, okay? Uh, but I want to remind everyone as we click around, some of you don't have your welcome email anymore. And if you have an old welcome email, it doesn't have your your new link over to the tax credits. It does have it, however, in the notifications that DAC has sent out. I've given instruction to on 
you know, click on the employee tax credits link on the DAC website, and then make sure you add your agent ID number to the end of that. I'll tell the story again, because I always have new people on here. Our websites work off of cookies. So when you first visit your website with an agent ID number at the end, the little bits of data or cookies, they get dropped onto your web browser. And that way, whatever page you click on on your site, your browser remembers that coding from your agent ID and anything gets credited back to you. But once you copy and paste a link from your browser, bar up there, if it doesn't have your agent ID number in it, when that link leaves your browser and you send it to someone else, it no longer has those cookies because the cookies are on your browser, right? They got dropped by your agent ID number there. And unless you add the agent ID number back to the link that you're sending out, then when it lands on a new browser, all it sees is davidallencapital.com forward slash tax credit. And it will say user unknown because you didn't send an agent ID to go to that next browser. So always, always, always make sure you add your agent ID number to the end of the link of any link of your website before you send it out. Obviously, if the link is already there with your agent ID number, don't add another one, it's already in there. But bottom line is anytime you're sending a link out, just look at it. If your agent ID number is not at the very end, then you're not sending your link out, okay? Also, um, it's going to populate additional characters in the bar once you hit enter and the page loads. You do not need, or actually you should not, add the extra characters. So don't use the question mark ref code equal signs. Just back those uh, additional characters out and just have a clean forward slash your ID number at the end of that link. Okay, so that's the end of the slideshow. I want to get over, get off of screen share again and go back to camera. Um, I just want to talk to you tonight about some conversations that I've had, some conversations that I'm hearing agents having, uh, some opportunities that are popping up in our organization, some things that David has mentioned. We had a, a CPA on the line today who has over a thousand personal clients, and he is going to be funneling every one of his personal clients through his DAC ERC platform, okay? That's huge. That's going to be a huge income on his own, just with his personal clients. And as we talked about with Leora, the, the amount of time freedom that you get, not having to do all the details on that, getting paid for it anyway, and being able to provide a great service to your clients and then continue providing the other services that the client is accustomed to. Um, I started personally last week, and some of you may have read this in an email, but I wanted to share this again. I started having conversations last week with my local business community. Right after we got the, the websites launched on Saturday, and I saw it on Monday, I was on the Zoom where David did our basic training a week ago today. So I had a good feel for what was going on and I started making my list. I'd already started making my list actually, but I'm going, okay, who am I starting with first? And I decided to start with some business owners that I have a really close relationship with. Why? Why do I have a close relationship with them? Well, I just remodeled my house. And the first people that I talked to are people that I spent a lot of money with remodeling my house, right? The contractors that did the work. So um, I reached out to them. They're obviously willing to take my phone call because I just spent several thousand dollars with them. And in that conversation, I shared, um, you know, how things were going with the house, appreciating their work. And I said, listen, um, I got a question for you. I know you guys were impacted by COVID, right? And y'all were able, were y'all able to get the PPP money? Started that conversation. They said, yeah, we got the PPP. And I said, um, they also had the EIDL, EIDL, which was a loan. You had to pay it back. So that wasn't free money like the PPP was. But did you know that there was the ERC, which was also um, available? Initially, it was PPP money and the ERC, but They've recently made some adjustments to that, and now you can qualify for both. 
meaning that the ERC would allow you to get up to $26,000 per W-2 employee that you had on payroll at the time of the um, your business getting impacted by COVID. And they're going, really? Every conversation that I had, they're going, wait a minute, I don't think we got that, right? So the conversations I've had with the business owners and some people that I was wanting to introduce the business to, none of them were aware of ERC. Or maybe they said, well, I've heard some commercials on it. Or um, one of the businesses that, that I have in play right now, they're actually in process. They have 30 employees and they're in process of going through getting everything uploaded to the CPAs. They just started the application on Friday. So hopefully I'll hear something within the next two weeks of what they would qualify for and what, it, what that picture is going to look, look like for them. But um, the fact that they didn't know was amazing to me because I'm hearing it everywhere. But there's this thing called your reticular activator, right? Have you ever thought about um, you, you picked out a new car model that you're going to buy? You hardly ever see them on the road. And then you go look it out, look at cars and you say, OK, this is the one I want and this is the color that I want. And all of a sudden, you start seeing that model car in that color everywhere, right? You ever done that? You know what I'm talking about? Well, that's your reticular activator. All that is, is that that has been out there all along. You just weren't aware of it because your mind wasn't focused on it. So it was blending into everything else. But all of a sudden, you've got your eye set on something or your ears tuned to something and you start being aware and seeing and hearing about it. So I'm hearing about ERC because I've, I've been familiar with it. Uh, I was introduced to it several months ago. So every time I would hear something, I'm going, okay, I'm, maybe that is legit. And, you know, just kind of doing my due diligence on it. But these guys that I've been talking to weren't aware other than the one that's moving forward with 30 employees. They said, Ellen, it's funny that you call. She said, I had a lady that called me that I didn't know at all. So, um, you know, I just kind of dismissed that call about the ERC. And then I had a local insurance agent that I know a little bit, but I don't real, know real well. Um, you know, she called and we talked for a minute, but I didn't move forward. She said, but I've known you all your life. So let's talk. Let's, let's see what, what you can do for us. So those warm relationships really make a difference, okay? And it may not, you know, I talk to people that say, well, I don't have any friends or I don't know anybody. Oh my God, how long have you been on this earth? If that's your thought, how long have you been here? Maybe you don't have uh, what you feel are, are good relationships because you haven't stayed in touch with people. But here's what I want you to know. There's no time like the present to start reconnecting with folks that you haven't talked to in a long time. And I don't recommend that you just pick up the phone and say, hey, I'm marketing this now. Do you know anybody? If you haven't talked to someone in a long time, just pick up the phone and genuinely catch up with them. I reached out to a friend the other day um, and we talked for an hour and only did the call get ended because they were getting ready to go to the gym, she and her husband. Um, but many things were covered in that phone call that will lead to a second call where I'll be reaching out and saying, hey, remember when you talked about this person, this person, and this person the other day? Um, I wanna bring conversation back to them because of what I'm doing right now. And we may be able to help some of those folks. So a second conversation will come into play because I reached out and I haven't talked to that friend in several years. I've, I've seen posts on Facebook and kind of followed through, but I reached out and had a, uh, a wonderful conversation with an old friend that I hadn't talked to in forever. And this person is highly connected through the business community, highly connected with people that love making money. And I never know where that conversation may lead to. So looking forward to that. But I want to share that with you because, um, you know, our business network marketing is about relationships and building a network of contacts. Uh, some of the other contacts that I've made, I've reached out to friends of mine that work for sizable employers. So 
again, I'm telling you my story so you can, uh, it'll spur something in you to jot down a note of someone that you're thinking of as I'm telling the story. I reached out to a friend that works for uh, a group that's about 50 employees. And I know that she's pretty connected with operations because it's a family owned business. And I said, hey, do you know how, I know COVID impacted you guys because they were laying some people off. I said, do you know if your owners were able to get PPP money and all of the different COVID relief programs out there? And she said, I know they got the PPP. And then I told her about ERC. I said, well, there's an additional program that you can get on top of PPP at 20, up to $26,000 per employee. Do you know if they got that money? And she said, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I said, well, is there any way that you can find out or um, open the door for a conversation with me and them to see if they got that money? Because it's free money. If they qualify for it, it's free money. It's a rebate on what they've already paid in. It doesn't have to be paid back. And if we can get that money for them, you will be their hero. Think about having that kind of conversation with your friends and people that you know that work for big employers, how you can help them be the hero in their boss's eyes by opening the door for them to get up to $26,000 per employee back in free money, right? So just want you thinking about that and thinking about outside the box on how you can reach out to people and who you might know. I'm always looking and thinking about business connections. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I have a small business association meeting inside of my chamber of commerce. This particular meeting is generally business owners. Some of the chamber meetings, I'll find that it's a lot of employees that come and represent their company, but tomorrow's meeting is typically the business owner. So I'm gonna be there early, be there with my business cards to hand out and talk to them about ERC. They all know that I am the local funding lady. I'm the funding expert with DAC. They send me re uh, referrals all the time, but now I'm gonna get the conversation started with ERC. And speaking about the chamber, I stopped in last Friday and talked to a couple of the executives there at the chamber that run the place, right? And I asked them if they were familiar with ERC and neither one of them really were. They had heard of it, but they didn't know about the program. So I gave them the, the high level overview of it and the lady that's responsible for recruiting new members, she said, oh, Ellen, she said, we've got to get you in front of these people. Everybody in our chamber needs to know about this, right? So again, this opportunity is huge. And when we have people that are in the business world that are connected to business owners and they aren't familiar with ERC, I think we have a really big first movers advantage. If you sit back and you wait and you decide that you're going to wait till you're successful or till you get your first client before you start recruiting other agents, somebody else is going to recruit them into some ERC program if you don't get out there and speak. So I, I say these things to you to let you know that timing is very critical right now. You want to be the first to market telling about the ERC and you want to be the first to market talking to people about the agent opportunity. And speaking of that, um, we've, Harlequin and I talk every day. We were talking again today. I've talked to several agents in the organization that are working with and have been promoting ERC through other companies because DAC is not the only one out here. There are several other network marketing or direct selling companies that are, that are offering the ERC and some smaller companies that are just a, a few a few man or person show that are offering ERCs and paying a commission to their sales reps, right? So the people in the, in the direct selling and networking community are learning how they can make some really big money with this. But we talked about it a little bit last week and I, I wanna do it again tonight and, and air on the caution of understanding the compensation plan that you're being promoted or is being promoted. Uh, specifically last week, I showed you guys a slide talking about how companies are saying that they're paying 10% out to the agent. And I've had 
three different people, four to, fourth one today, um, talking about how they're promoting for another ERC deal. And I said, oh, okay. And I'm going, how do you get paid there? And they go, oh, I get 10%. And I'm going 10% of what? Right? That is the pertinent question. 10% of what? Well, the 10% that they're getting is 10% of the contingency fee that the CPAs are collecting. So essentially, if that contingency fee is 20% and you're getting 10% of that, then you're getting 2% of the total refund amount that the client gets. Or if it's a 25% contingency fee and you're getting 10%, 10% of 25 is two and a half percent of the fee. So I wanna put it in these terms for you, okay? If, if someone is talking about their opportunity and they're trying to sway you or say that their payout is better than DACs, we don't, we don't pay specifically based on, or we do, but we, we say that we pay 4% of the refund amount. So when somebody says, well, we make 10, yeah, but of what, right? 4% of the refund amount versus 10% of the contingency fee is a big difference. 10% of that 25% contingency fee, remember it's two and a half percent of the refund where we pay four, we pay one and a half percent more on the refund amount. So if you want to put it into uh, apples to apples conversation, we actually pay 20% of the contingency fee. So when you're talking to someone that says, oh, they pay us 10%, if that 10% is of the contingency fee, DAC pays 20% of the contingency fee to the referring agent. And most of the companies that I've looked at, they only have like a one tier compensation override, not all, but most, they're doing a one tier, like a, a two level affiliate program. Uh, DAC is gonna pay multiple levels. Um, there's another company out there that does pay multiple levels, but they require a startup fee and they require a monthly fee to be eligible to earn those overrides. And it stops at like four or five levels. Ours goes much deeper than that. Actually, ours can go unlimited depths depending on what your level of qualification is. So. I know compensation plans. I've been in this industry for 22 years and I've learned what to look for in compensation plans. And I, honestly, I've just not seen another company out there that's doing this that has anything that competes or compares with what DAC is paying out. So um, between the compensation that we receive and between the high quality CPA firm that I believe we've partnered with. If you've not watched the two and a half hour training that was on last Friday and really gotten a feel for who we have picked to partner with, then you're missing another big piece of the pie. One last thing before we go to questions, and that is um, last night I recorded a 22 minute business overview, business opportunity presentation. You know, we don't have um, anything talking about ERC on the partner page. As of yet, David's working on getting a new uh, video on there, but I, I think it's imperative that we be recruiting right now and we need to be talking about the ERC conversation. So I created a PowerPoint and I did a recording of that. It is on my YouTube channel. If you did not see the email that I sent out with that presentation, or you did not get my text, if you're not on my text group list, um, then you may not have seen it, but you can see it if you just go to youtube.ellenwin.link, look for the business opportunity presentation. When you get to the end of that, it's gonna pop up a little box that'll automatically be a clickable link over to the full uh, interview and training session that was done on Friday. So it's kind of a one-two punch. If you wanna use that business opportunity link, um, it doesn't have, my information in it other than I'm the one presenting, but at the end of it, I say, get back with the person that invited you to this video and ask for their partner link. And then also in the description, I say, get back with the person that invited you to this presentation to get their partner link. So if I were you, I would be using that right now to share what DAC has to offer. It's concise, it includes that we're uh, not only doing ERC, but we have the funding program, right? When you talk to a business owner about the ERC, if they qualified and have money coming, 
or if they didn't qualify, chances are they might need money today. And we have the today funding option with our traditional uh, revenue-based funding. So that can be some immediate income for you and an immediate relief for the business owner that you're talking to. So promoting companies that only do ERC and don't have the full uh, platform of or portfolio of services that DAC does, I think we're just cutting the, the business owner short of the opportunities that are available for them to have some relief in this economy. So I wanted to share that and now I'll open up for any questions that you have or comments from you Harlequin or any questions that you see in the chat. Take it away, you take us down the next road. Okay, um, somebody was asking and I apologize, I had a business association meeting today so I missed part of this um, or part of the Zoom earlier. Um, did we get an update on when the marketing materials will be available to order for ERC? Um, not really. David said that he has requested the postcards be done and he's honestly frustrated right now. He says he's talking with another company that says that they can produce the cards for us. So we may be in the middle of shifting vendors because he's, he's really frustrated at the turnaround time from our current vendor. But that is definitely in the works and he's he wanted it yesterday and it's not ready yet. So not anything that we're not doing, it's on the vendor's part for them being able to, to get the, the print and everything ready to go there. Now there are flyers there in the back office, um, actually in the back office, not yet. In the Agent Resource Center, video number two has been updated so that it shows the ERC training right underneath the business funding training. There is now an ERC section in the Agent Resource Center. David's gonna be uploading the slides from Friday's training in there. So you have a slide that shows step-by-step -step what the process looks like for your client. If you wanna to refer to that and have a good feel for what they're going to be doing on the website. Um, but there are some images in the, agent re in the DAC agent Facebook group. There's one in particular that has the lady at the computer, talks about uh, up to $26,000 on the credit. One lady today on our Zoom said that she had taken that flyer and had reduced it down to a quarter page size, had put her name and information on there. And that way she had one printed page with cut into quarters to where she had a small leave behind when she was going out to businesses. Guys, if you're gonna use those, I would do at least two per, maybe four, if you're gonna reduce that size. Um, and I would add your name your phone number and your web address. And also I would go over and create a QR code. If you'll Google how to create a QR code for your website, go in and take your website with your agent ID or preferably your domain name as we teach you to use domains and use that as your web address and create a QR code that you can put onto the flyer. You wanna double check it use the camera on your phone or better yet, use the camera on somebody else's device and make sure that it's not cookies held on yours um, to be able to test it. Or you can open up an incognito window on your mobile device to scan that QR code, make sure that it goes to your website. But um, I would do that as a leave behind. And then you've got some flyers that you can print on your own. They're compliant because DAC printed them. All you're doing is adding your contact information to it. And then you've got to leave behind as you're out having conversations. Uh, for me personally, I have some business cards and I don't see one of them here in front of me. And boy, am I gonna open up a can of worms if I show you my business card. Um, yes, anyway, you will. <laughs> the what? I said, yes, you will. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, on mine, I have BACfundingoptions.com. That's the domain that I've had on there. I have just redirected it to where it opens up on the ERC page now. Because when I'm talking about it and handing out my card um, and they go to that, they scan the QR code on the web, on the card itself, I want to open up on what is the biggest conversation that we have. And that's the um, ERC refund. Yeah. <laughs> so go ahead, Harlequin. Um, Jennifer was asking about the PDFs of the drop cards. Those are the company that prints those has the exclusive right to those PDFs. So we, we don't have the ability to go and print them ourselves. Um, 
And then Seda sent me a direct message. It says, who will do the presentation of the ERC if I have a client who wants to know more about it? Ellen can do it or not. Okay, and that's a, a client-facing conversation, I assume? Sounds like it, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's really, there's really not a presentation necessary other than what I covered in the business presentation. I think my opening slides in that um, where I talk about the PPP and I, I can go through with what I would say and what I have said to business owners. Um, it's not really a presentation. Remember, we're not the experts. The CPAs are the experts and you can use your website. So let me go over to screen share here and I'll show you what I would do. And go over to open up the DAC site and go to the tax credits page, okay? So here you just wanna learn the lingo just a little bit, okay? Um, the ERC is tied to the COVID relief. So if you watch the business presentation that I sent out last night, that 22 minute business opportunity overview, I start out the presentation talking about how COVID devastated businesses in 2020 and 2021. And most people are aware of some of the government relief programs that were created to uh, ease the financial stress on those businesses. The one that everybody knows about is PPP, right? Most people got the PPP money if they were eligible. Were you guys able to take advantage of the PPP? That would be my question. PPP, were you able to take advantage of it? Yes or no? And then say, well, um, there was also the ERC program, Employee Retention Tax Credit, and when they first released those, it was either get the PPP money or the ERC, but now those regulations have changed where you didn't get one or the other, but you could actually get both, and the ERC allows you to get up to $26,000 back on the taxes that you've paid on your W-2 employees. Were you guys able to take advantage of that as well? Right. And as I just shared my personal story, the business owners that I had talked to had not taken advantage of that. So if they got PPP, they're almost a shoe in to be able to get the ERC. Right. So if they got that and they didn't get this, then they're a great candidate for you. If they got the PPP or they didn't apply for it because they didn't know how, then you just want to go to your website and scroll down to the middle section here and ask these three questions and say, oh, wow, well, um, you know, I'm sorry you weren't able to get the PPP. Do you have uh, W-2 employees that are outside of your family? And that's the question here. You're eligible if you had W-2 employees. We just need one, one W-2 employee. And that employee needs to be someone that's not the business owner themselves, not their spouse, not their children, not their parents or not their siblings, right? Anyone outside that immediate family would count as a W-2 employee with one working at least 30 hours minimum to be a full-time employee. If that's the case, that that's what qualifies on the W-2, then if they can answer yes to any one of these three questions, if they had a reduction in revenue, if their business was impacted by a government mandate where uh, wearing masks and social distancing was required. So it limited the number of people that were able to be inside their establishment at any given time, or um, they couldn't open at all, or uh, their supply chain was, was interrupted because of government mandates on that particular supply chain. There's a whole list of it. There, the tax code is over 400 pages, and that's why we're using CPAs and tax attorneys to get this done the right way because they know all the ins and outs of the code. The third question is, if you started your business after February the 15th, 2020, any business that started after that might qualify for a startup part of this program. So um, Seda, these are really the three things that you need to learn. Uh, what I just shared with you, go back and learn that language about sharing the story about the PPP, and the ERC used to be one or the other, but now they've changed regulations where you could get both, which means you could get up to $26,000 
per W-2 employee on top of what you may have gotten for the PPP. Now, technically, they're going to do a reduction on the PPP and they'll figure out the math on all that, but you don't need to get into the weeds. You don't need to get into the technicalities of it. You just want to pitch the program, right? To pique their interest, to get them on through to the next phase of answering these questions. And if they answer yes to those questions, then the next part of the website, and this is your website, so you all have access to this, is that there's no upfront retainer required. You only pay if and when you receive a credit. Just answer a few basic questions on the website, upload a few documents, and let our CPAs go to work for you. The CPAs will review your documents, and they'll finalize the credit amounts and file all the needed forms with the IRS. They'll work with the IRS until your credit is received in full, and then once you receive the credit, then and only then do you pay the contingency fee to the CPAs. When I told my business owner that has 30 employees, I'm going to get off of screen share. When I told my employer that has 30 employees that's in process right now, she's going, Ellen, I will gladly pay. She said, I did all of that PPP stuff myself and I about drove myself crazy. And I don't think I got near as much as I could have. But I just, I, I could, I would read this and not understand it and read the next thing and not understand it. And I said, oh yeah, I said, you think PPP was complicated. You can only imagine how complicated this one is. And she said, I will gladly play, pay. And then I told her what we've just learned. I said, well, don't worry about it. What I understand is our CPAs are usually able to get you at least about 20% more than you would get if you were doing this on your own. So what you're paying them in the end is probably going to be a wash to what it would have cost you if you tried to do it yourself. Bingo, they're in and they're ready. And that's a true, honest statement. So you just got to think through the process and listen to this. The good thing is tonight's video or tonight's uh, Zoom is recorded and I'll send out a replay. So you can listen to any section of this that has caught your attention. Just listen. Rewind, listen again, rewind, listen again, take notes, and then start practicing and rehearsing. I'm very fluent in ERC conversation today, but 10 days ago when I started talking about the ERC, I would get tongue tied on it. But I've talked about it to so many people now, it's just like second, second level conversation. So it's a matter of you just practicing and talking about it and getting the word out. Okay, I'm gonna to go to Sergio. How are you doing tonight, Sergio? I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Okay, can you hear me? I can, hello, hello. How you doing? Excellent. Hey, listen, uh, my question is about the replicated website. I'm, I'm trying to see how I can edit the email and the phone number that's on the top of the replicated website. Okay, that's a simple, a simple answer for you. You can do that by logging into your Longevity back office. Do you know oh. how to do that, Sergio? No, not really, I haven't, I haven't gone there. Okay, so go back to your welcome email that you received mm -hmm. when you signed up as an agent, or okay. you can go to the Agent Resource Center in the bottom left section, they're under Agent Resources or Agent Support, uh, there's a link that says DAC YGY back office login. When okay. you click on that, it opens up to a dashboard. First, you're going to have some disclaimers that you have to acknowledge. The disclaimers are that there's a $49 annual renewal fee and blah, blah, blah. None of that applies to DAC. We all signed up free and there's no annual renewal. So go ahead and uh, acknowledge that and you won't be able to move on through if you don't, but just know it doesn't apply to us. And then once you click on through, you'll be on a dashboard. On that dashboard, you'll have some icons. One says profile. You can either click that or look at the top there. There is a menu bar. You want to find the one that says profile. Click on that. Click on edit profile. You'll see um, your name and information. You can edit your mailing address. You can edit your email. You can edit your phone number. And whatever you save there is what will be displayed on the website. But I caution you, um, if you change your email address, if you have already signed up for a Relevate account, you must also 
go and update your email on the Relevate account. They have to match. Otherwise, when David is sending you commissions, um, they're verifying that it's the same account using email, so it must match on both sides there. Okay. All right, but that's just that's just the email with Relevate, not the phone number. Correct. Phone number okay. doesn't matter, but the email must be the same with Relevate and with DAC. Okay. Thank you, Ellen. Appreciate it. You bet. And uh, if you want more details about what's in the back office on that Vimeo channel, my mm -hmm. agent tutorials, I have a back office walkthrough in there as well. And that's vimeo.ellenwin.link. Okay? okay. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. Sergio. Appreciate the question. All right. Hey, Shelton, how you got? How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. So I've got two questions. Um, one, and I, I asked about it uh, during the uh, the Friday training, and I don't think, the, or was it Monday? Whichever. Uh, I don't think it was understood totally what I was trying to ask. All right. Um, I reached out to one of the, because where I live, there's four other villages around me, and each one of them has their own, um, uh, what's that called? Chamber of Commerce. And the I reached out to one of them and I was talking to the gentleman and he was really iffy about even having anything, even having me to do anything with the Chamber of Commerce. I mean, really almost trying to push me away from even joining. Um, and at first, I think, at first, he thought I was trying to sell something, and I wasn't. I was just trying to get, you know, introduce myself, tell them what it, what we were about. And then I was mentioning about this new uh, thing that we're doing. And and his response back to me was, oh, well, one of our chamber, I think it was the vice president, she's into accounting and all that. And she updates us on all this information. But he's talking about the board members and I'm like, I was like, I was like, okay, but I'm, what I'm going to be doing is reaching out to the local businesses and seeing if they've um, done this yet, if not offering them an option that will benefit them. And he started telling me about um, how they're all going through hard times, gas prices. I mean, totally trying to put, divert me away from that idea altogether. Uh, what is your, my question that day was, and it still is, what is the suggestion? Because I know you deal with the Chamber of Commerce all the time to present it maybe better than what I was. I thought I was doing pretty good um, to maybe open their eyes that I'm here to help the community, not to try to hurt it. Is my that's my first question. Okay. Yeah. So um, I I don't know. I, I went into my local chamber. I called them. And I asked what their fees were. You know, they asked me how I was set up. I told them I was a home-based business, uh, self-employed with no employees. And they told me what my annual membership would be. And I'm saying, okay, great. Well, I would like to come by and get a little bit more information and probably sign up as a member. So I didn't give them a lot over the phone. And when I went in, they wanted to know about my business. And my explanation was, well, I'm an independent agency owner with David Allen Capital. We are a small business services agency. We specialize in small business funding. And we, you know, now if I'm telling the story, I'd say we help business owners uh, get, get uh, some of the programs from the government. We, used, we were helping with PPP when it was out. We're now helping them with ERC, but we offer a variety of services in the financial space for small business owners. And that's really what I would just say over as an overview. Um, it's possible that you came across Selzy if you were giving him too much detail on it, like maybe you were trying to sell him on your services and he wasn't well, understanding. Well, that's um, the thing. I asked if there was a time and place where I could meet up and talk about joining and that, and then tell him about my business. And he was like, well, we can just do it all on the phone. And that's why I ended up having to tell him because, sure. I mean, he was, like I said, he was, even meeting in person so I could, you know, see about joining and all that was off the table before we even started. And wow. it was just like, 
Well, um, it, it's like with networking, you know, when, when you meet someone new, if you start the conversation asking them about themselves, say, well, hey, what do you do? Or in the case of talking to the chamber, can you tell me about your membership and what the benefits are? I'm considering joining your organization and let them pitch you on who they are and what they're doing. And then just yeah. like in networking, after you've allowed them to tell their story, they're going to turn around and say, oh, OK, well, tell me a little bit about your business. Right. So I would say that it would probably work the same way talking to the chamber. Ask them to sell you on the benefits of joining their organization and then turn around and, and give the benefits of what you do. But when you're giving the benefits, don't get down to the to the bare knuckles of it. Just kind of give that big picture overview that you're in the financial space independent agency owner with David Allen Capital. And we specialize in B2B services, helping business owners get, get capital that they can't get from the bank, some other uh, necessary financial services. And getting into the, to the details about it comes from you showing up at meeting after meeting, after meeting, after meeting. And I'm telling you, um, I gave my little elevator pitch many times before it really resonated with some of the members in there and they're going, wow, I'm just now getting what you do, Ellen, because I said something a different way with my elevator pitch and, and they heard it different or maybe it was because they had heard it five or six times and it finally hit them. So don't feel like you need to unload and give them the whole story with that first introduction. It's like um, going out on a date, right? You want to put your best foot forward and and hope that you get a second date because you haven't shown everything that you have to show on the first date. Okay, so maybe coming back and showing, trying to show even a greater interest in learning about what they what they have to offer and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the deal. They're gonna, they're, you're gonna have to pay money to be part of that organization. So you need to find out who they are, what they have to offer, what the cost is, and then I would also ask, um, as Harlequin will attest. Most of these organizations allow you to come in as a visitor at least one, sometimes two times before you commit to paying their fees. So find out a little bit about them, what their fees are and say, well, I would, I would love to come in and, uh, and visit and just kind of see how you guys do things. When is the next meeting coming up that you think I might be a good fit for? And then they'll ask you about your business and say you're in financial services. Cause my chamber in, in particular, they have a monthly meeting, what they call the firm, F-I-R-M, and that's for the financial, the insurance, real estate, and mortgage folks in those industries. So I always participate in that. And when I was asking which of the meetings she thought I should start out with, you know, she had to get a general feel for my business and what I do, and then tried to connect me with like-minded people in a similar industry where we would be a good referral base. But as time has gone on, I've been a member now for a year and a half. Um, everybody's really getting a feel for what I do. And I'm going to different meetings and participating in different groups that I haven't participated in before because it's a very active chamber and lots of good things going on there. Yeah, well, and that's one of the reasons why it was the first one I, I was, well, second one I was reaching out to. The first one I thought would be really more active in the community. And unfortunately, they're not. They're more... And it's a long story on that one. But this other one, I heard good things about. They're way more active. They enjoy doing, you know, like grand opening ceremonies and all. I mean, they do all this stuff. I was like, okay, you know, and my bank, my my bank manager of my bank actually suggested I went to them. And so it, that's why, it, like I said, it was right out the door. He wanted to hear everything on the phone. He really didn't. It, it was just really weird. Um, but all right. So my other question is, um, because I am going to be reaching out to local CPAs and do you feel that it's still a good idea to offer them like that little referral, um, uh, uh, like, uh, referral, uh, commission incentive or yeah, incentive, like a 3% or something like that? Well, it, it really depends on your relationship with those CPAs. You know, if you're reaching out to a CPA today, um, I would just kind of ask them, you know, how, how are you handling your client? I'm in the financial space and 
we have um, we're, we're we're doing some new programs now. I'm just reaching out to local CPAs to see how you're handling the ERC and if you guys are doing the ERC for your clients, right? Ask that question and then listen to them. Listen to what they say. And once they've shared with you whether they're doing it um, or whether they're, they're doing it for their clients or they're not doing it because they don't have the time or they're not doing it because they don't know how, then that'll really give you the answer to the next part of the conversation that you want to share. Um, you know, say, well, have you considered the amount of money, if they're saying they're not doing it or they don't know enough about it, then I would say, have you considered the amount of money that might be lay, might be on the table for your business owners to receive if they had a firm that they could work with that was professional and knowledgeable and could help them get the max rebates back, you know, and get that, that uh, tax professional thinking about how they're really doing a disservice to their business owners, if they're not at least providing them a resource, right? Don't okay. tell them they're doing a disservice, but get them to think about it. And yeah. then say, well, I, we've got a great solution for you. In fact, um, we'll be happy to pay you for referring clients over. Our company will pay you for referring clients over to us. We've partnered with a nationwide CPA firm that are experts at this. They have literally processed thousands of these refunds back to business owners They've got a streamlined process and uh, an in-house team of tax and legal professionals. They're focused entirely on the ERC. Could I interest you in learning a little bit more about our program and how um, you could get commissioned off of those referrals with, and get paid for making the referral, but you not having to do any of the work other than letting your clients know about it. That would be my conversation with them. Okay, so instead of maybe offering them a uh, a referral, um, like commission from me personally, maybe offer them a way to come into the program so that they get the commission. Yeah, I would, I would, and it, unless you have a relationship with that agent, they're probably not going to be comfortable with with Shelton saying, well, I'll pay you, right? Because they don't know you. And mm -hmm. unless you do a contract with them, there's no guarantee that they're going to get their money. Again, it depends on the relationship. Yeah. If you've got a prior working relationship and y'all done business exchange, that might be different. But if you're just meeting new CPAs, you can talk to them about partnering with us. Remember our opportunity page says partner with us at the bottom there and talks about becoming a partner and that's the language that you want to use is how they okay. could partner with us and get paid referral commissions for sending their clients over to us and letting our expert CPA firm and tax attorneys take care of getting the ERC, the max credit that they're due, uh, that's legal and ethical, and them getting paid for the referral and taking great care of their clients and helping their clients get all this extra money into their accounts that's much needed. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. You bet. Right. And Harlequin, if you want to chime in on um, some of the networking, other ideas, I know your mind was thinking and you're going, yeah, I need to tell him this. I need to tell him this. Feel free to go ahead and, and chime in on the networking and the chamber there. Yep. You know me too well. <laughs> um, no, one of the things that you will find is if you've got a large chamber, of commerce, you know, like Ellen and I live in the Metro Atlanta area, the Atlanta chamber, they focus almost exclusively on really big companies. Like they really don't have a lot of small companies that are members and they're not, they don't play well with smaller companies. So if that was the type of group that you were contacting, um, that was kind of blowing you off. That's probably why. No, no, it's it's um, small. It's uh, uh, the the village. The, the first one is that, and th there, there's a total disconnect there between them and the businesses. It's, it was actually quite shocking to me, the disconnect I felt. But this other one, um, no, the, the village, I would say. It, you don't need, yeah. Well, it's small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Part of it is a lot of times with the, ch there, some chambers are more focused 
on bringing new businesses to the area than anything else. And that's their primary focus. It's not working with the existing businesses. They're focusing more on attracting new businesses to the area to expand the economy. So you just need to kind of find out a little bit more about, you know, hey, what, what's your focus? You know, um, that type of thing. And Ellen was right in that, find out if you can attend a couple of events. Usually they'll let you attend some because um, one, you get to find out what types of businesses are active. It's one thing if you, you know, there's uh, on those associations and chambers and stuff like that, they have a huge long list of members, but the people who actually show up is very small compared to that. And some groups, it's more sales reps that show up rather than the actual business owners or decision makers. So you need to keep that in mind whenever you're approaching them. Um, the other thing that I would add is on the CPAs when you're talking to them. If you go and talk to them and say, hey, you know, let's bring your clients in and have, you know, you can get the commission. Um, if you're getting, you know, if you were suggesting, you started to suggest 3%, if you gave them 3% of your 4%, you actually would make more money if you're engaged or if you're amped up, if you gave them the 4% and you got 2%. So there's more money that way. The other thing is like Ellen mentioned, if, they're going to feel more comfortable and they're also going to be more involved in the process with their clients because they're going to get the updates on their clients. They don't necessarily want to give their client information to you because then they're your clients and you can go and contact them to get funding and stuff like that, as opposed to if they are their clients, they can contact them later about funding or other services that we offer. So um, they're going to be much more comfortable doing that. And they will go and instead of putting in two or three into the funnel, they might put 30 or 40. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So, yeah, Excellent. definitely sign them up as agents. Excellent. And talking about chamber and networking and all that, um, I, I want to come back around to something that was covered Friday. I asked David about it again today, and that was a conversation started by Jeremy, where he said that the IRS had recently put out a document, sent it out to all CPAs, warning them about and letting them warn their clients about some of these third party companies that are marketing the ERC. Unfortunately, anytime there's money to be made out there, there are folks that take advantage of people and there are some scamsters there. I read an article of a company in Texas uh, that the IRS is going after because they've been doing fraudulent ERCs and um, running off with people's money. So that is going to be the case anytime there's an opportunity to be made. If you, if, if you don't know it, um, a large percentage of the PPP loans and the EIDLs were fraudulent because there were so many people going in and trying to take ad advantage of this free money. So um, people are going to be cautious. I know with my local chamber, I remember two weeks ago, prior to us launching this in one of the larger networking groups, we all get to stand up and do our 30 second pitch on who we are and what we do. And there was a lady there that I'd never seen before. And she said, I'm helping business owners get the employee retention credit. And I'm going, who are you coming into my territory? That's how I felt, right? Because she's, she's obviously just popping in from meeting to meeting to meeting and going around doing networking. And that's how you get out in your community. But she was just a pop in and disappeared. I've not seen her again. Those, those chamber members, and business owners are gonna feel more comfortable with that regular person that is there at event after event after event, because then you're building that trusted relationship with them. So just be aware, 
as you're out talking, especially when you're doing cold market stuff and you're introducing yourself about the ERC, you may get some pushback from someone that has read that or has heard that or has read a story about some of the ERC stuff out there and just be steadfast in your faith in what we're doing here at DAC, that we're working with licensed CPAs that are working with licensed tax attorneys that are doing this the right way. And it's unfortunate that there are some folks that aren't, but we're doing it the right way. And just stand steadfast in that and know, but you need to know what you're up against from time to time so that you're not surprised if that conversation comes up, okay? All right, any other questions before we wrap up tonight? We've had a good group, some good questions and great promotion, yeah. I um, love it. We've got one, what if someone asks how they know these are CPAs handling their paperwork? Do they get an email or communication indicating license number, et cetera? Mm, I don't know, that's a good question on license number and the communication that comes from them. Um, I did personally go through the application startup with my client since they're a friend of our family. I went and sat down with her. She typed in my web address while we were there. She filled out the first page and I said, okay, that's gonna take you on over. I said, also, you wanna check your email and you'll be receiving an email where you can get back in. And as she filled out that page on the Bank Breezy site, you know, you click the button on the, um, the tax credit page on your David Allen Capital site. And then it takes you over to Bank Breezy. And then once they fill out that first page, then they're there with that branded Bank Breezy, DAC and ERC Pros. So I made it, made it I pointed out, I said, notice here on this page, you see e, uh, ERC Pros. I said, that is the accounting firm. They will be contacting you and what you're filling out right now is giving them permission to do so. So I made a point of that statement to tell her that, to look for that, look for the communication. And then um, she'll receive the portal access. Once they're in the portal, it's a secure portal. And I'm sure that all the tax licensing and everything is back there. But how do we know? We know because David Rutz would not have connected us with a company that is not truly legitimate licensed CPA firm and tax attorneys. They're the real deal or we wouldn't be doing with them, doing business with them. And I can speak that from being here with DAC for four and a half years and never, ever, ever has there been a moment of me going, ooh, I don't like that. It didn't feel good. It didn't sound good. That has never happened with my time here with DAC. And I don't think it ever will because I know who David Rutz is and I know his integrity and his leadership and what his intent is on making DAC one of the legacy companies in this industry. And you only get there by doing things the right way and treating your agents fairly and providing a great service to our customers. And um, if, if we had something that was not good for us, the word would get out quickly. So that's not gonna happen. So just rest assured with that. Um, I don't know where that code would be. I see James has his hand up. Hey, James Doswell, how are you doing tonight? Hey, hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Monday. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everybody's great. Okay, um, I want to um, ask a question slash suggestion, okay? Um, I listened to everything that everybody said, and it's excellent. Um, I'm just wondering if, if the wording was changed just a little bit, would the um, response be better? What I mean is this, instead of um, employee retention credit, payroll tax credit, everybody that's got a business out there, okay, they know what a payroll tax credit is. They've been paying it. They don't want to pay it, okay? Speaking to a CPA, for example, um, Ellen, um, your lead in, I thought was great, but if it's something along the line of, you know, this is who I am, um, how are you handling, um, your client's payroll tax credit that's available now or payroll tax credit refund that's available now mm -hmm. you stop talking. Okay. Versus, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, ERC, because in listening to everybody, and what's going on and what's happening out there, it's like, well, I've heard about this, and I kind of heard about that, and 
Now, what is that exactly? Okay. But when you say payroll tax credit, okay, they know exactly what that is. And if you're asking a CPA, you know, how are you handling, you know, all your clients getting their credit kind of thing? Um, I just um, thought maybe that might be better. And um, Ellen, if, if we could share a screen right quick, the, um, our page, our ERC page. There it is, payroll tax credit right there on your tax credit website. Okay, now if you scroll down to the, I call it the clock. <laughs> okay. Oh, this clock, yep. Okay, now if you notice, okay, going through that, that's what that talks about. That talks about your credit. The first one in the middle talks about your eligibility and your credit amount, okay? When you get down, okay, two o'clock and then at four o'clock over there, it says the CPA review your docs, determine slash substantiate your credit with the IRS. The next one, same thing, your credit amount. The next one going up with the, with the dollar sign until your credit is received. You know, there's nothing there about ERC except at the very top, but everybody recognizes and if you're telling them, okay, the money already paid, there's a refund and a credit you can get at a check from the IRS. That's all I'm saying. You know, adjust the wording a little bit. Absolutely. I like it, James. I mean, you're right on. It, it's all um, what you say, okay? And sometimes it's what you don't say, but employee retention credit is the program. And I'm starting to hear that advertised a lot. So You'll have some people that say, yeah, I've heard of, I've heard about that, but what is it? Well, it's a payroll tax credit. And then you're going into layman terms with it. But yeah, great point there. All right. Can I stop screen share? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. Was that all you had tonight? Thank you for that. Other than, um, 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 what was that you said uh, two, three weeks ago? Uh, 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 something about uh, the one from the Bible. What was that? Oh, oh go, go for it. Multiply. Right. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> You're a funny man. I love you, James. All right, Clark, I'm going to ask you to unmute. That is Melody. How are you tonight? Okay, how are you? Good. <laughs> I haven't fixed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> just just been real busy crazy. Um, I don't know if you know much about it or, or whatever. I'm a little gray about the um, tribal, um, you know, the tribal people able to do the ERC credit. Okay, just think of it this way. Anybody that has paid W-2 payroll taxes to the federal government is eligible for the ERC payroll tax credit. Okay, so just just ask, just talk to them about, you know. If... And, and I don't know if that applies to uh, some of the tribal nations, but if they're paying payroll taxes to the federal government, then they're eligible for the credit. Right. Well, and, and that, that goes too to our um, uh, U.S. territories, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, anybody, if they're in a U.S. territory and they're paying federal payroll taxes, then they're eligible for the credit. Okay. Yeah, because um, some people were talking today about that and I, I was like, well, I'm still kind of gray on how all that works or to, you know, talk to them about it. There's a lot of you know, casinos and different things that they do and everything. And, and so well, that might be just a good conversation starter, you know, find, find a key person there and say, Hey, I'm trying to learn a little bit about how you guys, um, how your organization works with the U S federal government. Do you, you Ellen, know, I can answer programs this and ask, go ahead. What's that? Yeah, I, I can answer this. Government entities are excluded there right. is an exception for tribal governments. So any, any tribe that is operating an entity, um, they are eligible. Now with casinos, they may have too many employees, but um, you know, but yeah, any, any sovereign nation entity is eligible. Yeah, but back to what I was saying is to find that person in the casino and, you know, just do some fact finding, say, hey, can you help me out? Here's what we do. And I'm trying to find out, you know, do you guys pay taxes into the government on your payroll? Are you paying 
federal taxes. Are, are you aware? And if they say yes, say, well, are you aware of this payroll tax credit that you could be getting a refund on through the ERC, part of the CARES program? So there's nothing wrong. You don't have to know everything about how they operate. Um, you can go in and just honestly be asking questions to have that conversation with them. And I say that, Harlequin, on top of just anybody, if you are ever in doubt about something, just ask questions and find out how something works, listen to the answer, and then think about how it could work with what we're doing or ask for one of us to get on the phone with a client with you. And a question earlier about presenting to a client, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to do a three-way call with any client that you have that has questions, as is Harlequin. If you're in Harlequin's team, uh, we don't wanna bother her with calls if you're not in her organization, because she's I, getting really busy with her team these days. I, I don't know whose organization I'm in. They're, you're in mine. Everybody on here, unless you're outside and you're just joining because you've seen my um, my link on the DAC pages, you're in my organization. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't know how it all rolled down. I didn't know if Harlequin was underneath you or how all that worked. Yeah, it rolls up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah, know what so I'm saying. I personally I just... sponsored Harlequin, and she has her own team, and... Um, Melody, I can't remember who you came in through, but you're in my organization for sure. Right. Yeah, somewhere. I'm, like I said, I I I, I kind of just went online and just signed up. So, you know, it was it was just kind of one of those things or whatever. Um, but you know, now I'm getting really into the ERC thing because I've already done it with another, you know, entity. And wishing now you guys had started earlier, <laughs> you know, because uh, my commissions are going to be different with these other people, as well as today, I have, for instance, I have one that was a church that that went all the way through and they are they're getting signed with the IRS, um, their check is going to be 186,000 but I only get 2% of that um, through this company so I have four or five other ones that are, you know, they they answered all the questions. They did the interview. They're they're sending their papers in, and they're waiting to hear back. You know the offer, how much they're supposed to get, and their offer. You know that type of thing or whatever. And it's been weeks. And you know some of these people, I'm really questioning if my name's on there somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So, wow. I'm I'm I'm. I even talked to the gentleman today. I was like, uh, I have these people. I'm not getting any answers. And they're like, well, we're really busy, blah, 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 blah. You know, I promise we'll get back to you. But, you know, that's why now, like I said, I wish I would have, you know, uh, you guys would have been going a little bit earlier because all those would be flowing there. And I would probably know what's going on with them because this is just making me crazy. You know, well, if, um, some, if something doesn't add up right there for the customer, I would talk with your customer and our uh -huh. client and, you know, say, have you heard back from these guys? Have they sent your proposal on what it is that they believe your tax credit or, or have they determined what your credit is? Mm -hmm. um, and have you signed an agreement with them? Mm -hmm. You know, your client may not have even sent them documents that they need yet. So they may not be. Oh, they did. Documents. No, I checked. They did send them the documents. OK, That's what I'm they, saying. they're they waiting for the quote back. Right. They're waiting on their quotes. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah well, I, I would give them an option if they're waiting on a quote and they haven't signed a, an agreement with them yet. I would give them an option and say, hey, you know, you may you may or may not want to change midstream, but I have a different company that is moving things along. Uh, what I'm understanding, they're moving things along pretty quickly and mm -hmm. we can get you a solid answer within 10 to, to 14 days. If you are yeah. if you wanna wait and stay where you are, that's fine, but I have another option for you. I would okay. personally do that if you just don't feel like something is is right with that and they're mm -hmm. giving you the runaround. It sounds like they may be um, getting more business than they can handle. Well, and that's it. And I don't, and I would rather not get lost in the mix. Yeah. And okay. so, you know, because I, there was one, and I don't even know what happened with that one. They said, to, you know, does somebody know who this person belongs to? And I'm like, yeah, and, you know, <laughs> but I never did hear anything back from that. And so now, like I said, I have, you know, four or five others that are out there and, you know, and also word of mouth is getting around to where I was talking to a gentleman and I mean, they did, you know, trace it back to me, but, you know, 
you, I will send out emails or talk to somebody and say, do you know somebody? Here's my link. You know, there people are getting on those links and, you know, communicating and I'm not involved other than my, you know, this is, this is, you know, I sent this out or whatever. So, and when they get on, you know, to uh, schedule their conversation, they're supposed to put in there who referred them. If they don't put my name in there as a referral, then I'm lost in mix or whatever. So, you know, when you're sending out an email, some people might not like put that there, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, and that's why, um, why I um, reiterate the importance of making sure your agent ID number is at the end of the link with BAC. If your ID number is positioned in the link as it should be, then your name is automatically populated in the form that your client fills out and you're gonna get an automated email saying, congratulations, you just had a client begin the ERC process. I forget right. how it's worded, but I immediately received that email when my client started the process. So you'll get that and David's updating the ERC communications there on our quick reference guide as well. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. I appreciate your help. Thanks, you Marla. Bet. You bet. I'm glad, I'm glad you're getting on board with DAC's ERC program. Okay, James, you got your hand up again. Oh yeah, a, a really quick. Um, hopefully, uh, this won't um, open up a big can of worms. But um, from the training on Friday, there's two things that go on once they're inside the app: click a box or type in some information. And on that 20% more than everybody else on the average that um, we're getting for people, from what uh, was, was taught in the training, anywhere after they get in the canopy, this might be the, the worms, <laughs> okay, the canopy, okay. Once they get inside the canopy, we need to have in our own minds to understand in the flow of the conversation, you know, with whoever our clients are, uh, once you get inside and you're inside the canopy, anywhere where it says type something, in the training on Friday, he said to be specific and as elaborate as possible, because that's what enables the lawyer to dig through the code so that they can get maximum credit. So whenever it says type, because the rest of them is just click a box, click a box, click a box, yes or no kind of thing. But once you get in there and it says type this, just kind of, you know, mention to our clients that, okay, you want to be specific. You want to be honest because we're going to get you maximum credit. Right. And they've even got some examples of instead of this, explain it this way. They've got those inside um, the, the questionnaire there. And Canopy is the technology platform, from what I understand, when you say the Canopy, Canopy is the technology platform that they're accessing there for that secure portal. So, oh yeah, that yeah the um, the upload in there is incredible. Okay, you can take <laughs> anything that you have. Okay, you can use a um, 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 on your phone camera and I'll turn it into a PDF and you just upload it. <laughs> anything Excellent. you got on your computer, okay, just upload it. Okay, that kind of is a monster. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to mention that um, you know that, um, to kind of help in case you know somebody says, well, okay, how do I how do I upload? Where do I upload that kind of thing? And once um, our, um, um, that 10 to 14 day period is there and they know what the number is, according to the training, that's when they get the canopy email. And it's just bang, bang after that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Wait to see that <laughs> from that, that, that quote amount for the first client on my part. Uh -huh. I love it. Absolutely. Okay, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. And Shelton, you got your hand back up? Yes. Um, something that Clark said uh, triggered uh, a question. Um, I have my own domain that I have forwarded to my DAC one. It just the, but I had um, somebody question me about why am I forwarding them to something that's not my business name because my business name is under my dakota country Sh to eliminate that should i just go get a domain of my name and then just have like 
the forwarding part being like uh erc dot my name dot com or uh, what what would you be your suggestion on that because the person got really iffy because when they got li- forwarded to the dac site it I, I think they felt it was almost like a bait and switch and it wasn't but i get where they might have been coming from so what's your suggestion on that yeah so anytime you buy a domain name and you're doing a redirect on it that's what happens right you type in one name and then it changes over to a different address on there. So I would just say um, whatever name you're using, make it something that fits in with the industry that we're in. Like I have dacfundingoptions.com and that was going over to my funding page on David Allen Capital. But since I have so many of my, my little drop cards out there in my business community, I originally set up erc.dacfundingoptions.com, but then I thought, you know, I want everybody that's going to my QR code, I want them to just land on the ERC credit page. So I changed my domain to where it redirects to there, but um, I don't know. You're going to run across those occasionally, but you can easily explain it and say, well, look at the web address in the browser and look how long that is. I just used a domain to redirect so it was a shorter name to type in for my clients to get to where they need to be. That's all a domain really is. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, but would it maybe help if I did just do one with my name just to help maybe limit that some because when they get redirected, they'll see my name right up there anyways. So you, you can, I always tell everybody, if your name.com is available, right, then you should buy it because that's valuable real estate to you at some point in time. Okay. Um, what did you say? Your Dakota country? Right, right now, it's Dakota country uh, capital services.com. And then I haven't read anything re- wrong with that at all. Yeah. And you're talking about business capital in there. So. Um, just say, hey, that's that's my branded name, but I'm an independent agent with David Allen Capital. So for short, here's the domain that goes over to my David Allen Capital agency. I would just say that that's kind of a one off. Um, I, I rarely ever have anybody say something about that anymore because okay. so many people are used to domain redirects. OK. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for the question. And um, Amy, hey, how are you doing tonight? I'm going to ask Ellen. you. Know, can I just um, interject sure. something? Um, Shelton, if you're masking the domain name so that it stays your domain name up in the up in the very top, sometimes people get a little bit upset about that when they don't see where, you know, because you can what it's what they call masking, where whenever somebody types in the domain name, it will stay your Dakota whatever. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm just telling people, yeah. sometimes people do that and that will trigger something. But if you're giving them a David Allen Capital drop card and it's got David Allen Capital on there, I've given out 5,000 drop cards. I've never had anybody say that to me. So yeah, no, this, this was actually, this was actually somebody on my Facebook that I, that asked me, said that they needed funding for x amount and i was like okay well and i i gave them some quick details of qualifications and i was like if you meet these qualifications here's a link and i gave them my uh, uh on because everybody could see it i just gave them the my dakota country capital services link which is directly forwarded over to there and as soon as i typed it in there it even showed the dac logo immediately so i mean it's not masked or anything and then now all of a sudden it just brought up these these questions like almost, like i said it almost felt like they thought i was uh doing a switch and bait on them and i wasn't so okay um I, two things from that conversation one what harlequin just addressed about masking it's important to know if you if you go into your domain redirect you have the ability to mask and that's exactly what she says whatever your domain name is it will remain in the browser at the top of the page but you do not ever want to use masking. Your DAC site will not work if you use masking on a domain name. The yeah, no, I don't. Work and it won't carry your ID number over. So I'm saying that exactly. for everybody's benefit, right? Yep. Um, the second thing, if you, 
it goes either way. If you're doing something on, I, I use a domain specifically to have that for giving out my information over the phone or giving it out to someone on printed material rather than having that long URL forward slash my ID number, right? But a lot of times if I'm making a post on social media or I'm sending a message through Messenger, I actually use just my David Allen Capital link. So oh, we're able to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can use your David Allen Capital link because that's why it populated the image anyway, because it was reading what was behind the redirect on your mm -hmm. domain name. So you can actually just pop, put your link out there as a David Allen Capital agent. Yes. You okay. Can do that if you, so again, the, the domain name makes it easy for someone to type in a shorter address and not leave off digits or get them mixed up at the end. But if you're sending something that's clickable, either by email, text message, uh, Facebook, social Facebook, media, yeah. messenger, any of those where they're just going to click a hyperlink to go straight over to your site, it's fine just to use the, the actual DAC link, especially okay. in a group where people don't know you, then you'll never be faced with that. Hey, this feels like a bait and switch. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Cause I just, I'm trying so much to make sure I don't violate the new rules that maybe I'm going overboard. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank so you. We appreciate that, that, that you're doing the right thing there, Shelton. Thanks for the question. Okay, Amy, um, back to you. What do you have tonight? All right. First off, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Because I'm having to use an external mic. Do what now? Um, I'm having to use an external mic because my computer didn't come with a mic. <laughs> I got you. Okay, yeah, I got that. Okay, cool. Um, I was thinking um, about uh, going after construction and medical businesses and using my chamber directory. Good plan. Um, yeah. And um, I was wondering, um, would there be another industry that would be as good as those two or two? Yeah, so the restaurant industry, just, just think about the industries that were hit the hardest with COVID, right? If you're leading mm -hmm. with ERC, think of the industries that were hit the hardest with COVID. Some of the, he said that some of the home health uh, organizations were hit really hard because uh, they had restrictions on being able to go into people's homes, restaurant industries with the um, social distancing or not being able to open at all. Um, movie theaters, if it's a larger theater, they might have kept employees on staff, but they probably wouldn't have large employee groups. But yeah, just think of who got hit and um, get them, ask, ask them the questions. I wouldn't, I, I personally... Oh. It, Part of a chamber, I wouldn't worry about the industry. I would just go down that list and reach out to every single person in my chamber directory and make, your, okay. make an introduction and ask them, are they familiar with it? And have they applied for it if they had W-2 employees? Okay, okay. Yeah, I was wondering, how would you approach the chamber employees? Tell them, I guess you would start off by saying, I'm a fellow chamber member. Yeah, if you're calling on chamber from the directory, uh -huh. yeah, I would call, look to find who the owner is. And you want to call them directly and say, hey, I just, this is Amy McDaniel. I'm a part of the, uh, or we're fellow members of the such and such chamber. I just wanted to call and introduce myself. Here's what we do. And I, I noticed that you're doing this. Looks like you've been in business for a while. I just wanted to call and introduce myself and let you know the services that I have available to our chamber members. Uh, we're focusing right now on the payroll tax credit from the, uh, from the IRS. Were you guys able to take advantage of some of the COVID relief programs that were offered? And are you aware of the employee tax credit where you could get up to $26,000 per employee back off of your payroll because of being impacted by COVID? Just ask, you know, just have a little conversation with them and ask them, but it's a I just want to introduce myself. Okay. Yeah. Because there's like 12 pages of nothing but chamber members. In the Sounds direction. like you got a gold mine right in front of you. Yeah. You would be very hard pressed to make calls 
to everybody on that chamber list and not get several ERC applications unless you blow the phone call. Right, right. So what I, what I would recommend, Amy, I know you're a fairly new member to this chamber. Have you been going to some of their, their meet and greet face-to-face -face functions? Yes, and um, I have gotten a referral from one of the chamber members. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I would look at the member base and look at who might be a good connector for you, right? You're mm -hmm. in the financial space, so look to see if there are CPAs in there. That's going to be your first uh, connector. Also look for financial advisors because they have, they deal with business owners. Entrepreneurs are putting their money in those financial advisor pockets. And if those financial advisors are getting paid off of the money that they're managing, they darn sure well want to make sure that that business owner is getting that 26,000 per employee credit back so that they can put it in accounts with them. Um, you know, just think about who good connectors would be and reach out to them and say, hey, I'd like to meet for a cup of coffee go sit down and, and learn more about your business and, so we can see how we can help each other. And just set a little 30 minute meeting and you know find out about them, genuinely figure out who they are and how you can help them. And then have an opportunity to share what it is that you're doing. Because if they've been a long-term member, they're gonna be more willing to reach out to you as a new member and be willing to help guide you in a direction um, I know my chamber has ambassadors that yeah. are there to really help connect everyone. Maybe see if you have ambassadors or that type of person in your chamber and oh, we do. have a cup of coffee with them and tell them what it is that you're doing and pick their brain for who some great connections would be, what businesses they might know that have several employees. Because the minute I sit down with anybody in my chamber, they're going, Ellen, you need to talk to so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. They're just a wealth of information. Same thing with our um, business association here in Atlanta that Harlequin and I are members of. Those guys were eager to start telling us who we needed to talk to. So get to know the people at your chamber, get to know the ambassadors, those people that have been there for a long time because they want to have you uh, or want to help you succeed so that you remain as a member year after year and your success is helping bring in more members to the organization. So they'll help you if you just ask for it and meet and greet and connect with the right folks there. Yeah, and um, when they did that ribbon cutting for me, um, they gave me a mentor from the chamber. Awesome. So somebody Use your mentor. Huh? Use your mentor, because here's the deal. You don't have to be an expert. A lot of people that join the chamber, just from personal experience, my years as an entrepreneur, a lot of people that join the chamber, they're brand new business owners. They've never owned a business before, or they're in their first year or two just getting established, and they're counting on the chamber to help provide resources to them that are going to help them succeed. So, that mentor, don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to let them know that you're, you're fairly new in this space or whatever you want to divulge to them and ask them for advice and guidance. That's what they're there for. And I just wanted to make a, one little comment. Um, when I was at the very first chamber meet and greet, um, the sales director of the hotel that was sponsoring the meet and greet said she was following me around because I was working the room. <laughs> so, there you go. so I, I had, yeah, I was a little self conscious at first because I was going from person to person, not staying with them too, too long and going to somebody else but I would just say you know whatever your style is go with it whether it's sitting talking to the same person the whole time or whether it's flitting around like a butterfly flower to flower I get it well let, let me give you a little little insight to something that that I did years ago um I went to bartending school. I dropped out of college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I paid my way through bartending school, much at my parents' um, chagrin, I'll say. 
Um, <laughs> so I went to bartending school and I became a bartender and I'm very much a quiet, reserved person. I'm not a social butterfly, okay? Unless I'm in a social environment with friends, but when I've got a bunch of strangers around me, I'm usually the quiet one. So one of the things that I would do before I would go to work, I would go get dressed for work and, you know, have my makeup on and my hair or whatever. And then I would go stand in front of my mirror and do this little psyche thing to myself with conversation, just talking about how awesome I was, how great I was going to be taking care of my customers and how much money I was going to make for the night. And I would get myself psyched up standing in front of that mirror that by the time I walked into the bar. I was the superstar behind the bar for the night. I did that every day. It was me getting myself out of my comfort zone and talking myself mm. into having the success and being sociable and being willing to talk to strangers at the bar. So maybe put that DAC super or Wonder Woman uniform on. So when you walk into those chamber of commerce, you're not Amy. You're the DAC hero that's walking in to inform everybody about this program money that they could be receiving as a rebate, or maybe they don't qualify, but maybe they need our funding. And that's the beautiful thing of DAC is we've got the ERC money, but what if they can't wait or what if they're waiting for to qualify and they need money today? You've got that solution as well. So be the DAC hero, put on that, that other uniform and just walk in as the, the DAC hero and maybe not Amy, but it sounds like you've already got it going. If you were the one working the room, just do more of that and be consistent with it. And you'll just knock this out of the park, Amy. All right, thank you. You bet. All right, any other questions before we wrap up? We've had lots of questions. I appreciate all that. I'm always happy to answer everything um, that we have coming. And I see that comment, Ray very reserved and quiet. Yeah, I, I, I could stay home by myself all the time and just be happy. But I love doing these Zooms and you guys are my friends, right? I'm not in a room full of strangers when we do our Zooms, but I'm not the social butterfly out and about at meetings. So just have to find a different way to put that costume on and get out there and know that you're doing a good service. All right, guys, if you don't have any comments, questions, Harlequin, anything we need to say before we wrap up here? No, the only thing that I, well, I do have one thing. Um, when you are ordering drop cards, make sure you proofread them. Make sure that you put your agent ID number. You know, if you're using the davidallencapital.com forward slash whatever, and then forward slash your agent ID number, make sure your agent ID number is in there and make sure that your QR code is working properly. You know, take it on, you know, on your computer, have, if you have to take a picture of it and check it out because we have somebody who didn't do that. He was new whenever he ordered them and all excited. And now we're gonna have to figure out how to put stickers on everything so that he can use those cards. Yeah, it pre-populate, the business funding card pre-populates with davidallencapital.com forward slash business dash capital forward slash pound, 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 or hashtag, 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 hashtag. You have to remove the hashtags and put your agent ID number in the end of that link, or it will not be your link. All that will end up working is your name, your email, and your phone number on there, and they won't be able to get to your website. So proofread it by downloading, saving the PDF, and then pulling it up and scanning it with your phone to go to your website. Incognito, I would use it so that it's not pulling up your information using cookies. All right, great comments there, Harlequin. Guys, you guys have a wonderful evening. We're gonna be doing some um, live business presentations throughout the week, but until then, please, please, please start recruiting. Use the link that I posted on my YouTube channel and get the message out to people. We're a great team, but we can't do this alone. You need hundreds of agents on your front line to really make an impact on American businesses. And it's up to us for that mission to be accomplished. So y'all have a great night. We'll see you on the next live Zoom. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Good night.